G'day, Chris here and welcome back to Clickspring. In this video, I make the small assembly designed to safeguard the clock from overwinding, the stop work mechanism. The stop work design used in this clock is essentially a simple counting device. Pinned to the side of the great wheel, it consists of two small wheels, a pivot and a small friction bowspring. As the barrel arbor rotates with each turn of the winding key, it also turns the stop work driving wheel. The count wheel records each pass of the driving wheel tooth until the maximum number of desired turns has occurred. At that point, the wheels become locked and no further winding is possible, preventing the clock from being damaged. The barrel arbor requires a slight modification to accept the hexagon shape of the driving wheel which is so shaped to permit the wheel to be positioned in up to six starting points. The wheels for this part of the mechanism were cut back in episode four. So the next step required to prepare them was to trim off the waist stock on that driving wheel and then bring it to an accurate circular profile. I started by marking out the work using the wheel crossing jig. I use the scroll saw and belt sander to bring the work closer to the line, taking care to stay clear of that solitary tooth, and then I finished off the perimeter with needle files and abrasive paper. The driving wheel hole needs to be filed to match the arbor hex, so that'll come later when I've made the required modification to the barrel arbor. In the meantime, I need to determine the optimum depthing for these two wheels and then mark it out on the great wheel, which means disassembling the clock for the first time since it was put on test a few weeks ago. And I have to say that the depthing was a bit of a surprise. The interaction when gears are used like this for single tooth movements is very different to the normal tooth engagement. To permit the driving wheel to lightly pass into engagement, tick over the count wheel and then carry on for another full rotation, the wheels require a much shallower depthing than normal. In fact, I ended up using a value quite a bit larger than the theoretical depthing figure to guarantee a reliable count with no jamming. Once that depth was established, I transferred it to the great wheel, making sure that the marked position was central to the wheel spoke. The marked position was then drilled and tapped to accept the shouldered pivot. A quick deburr with a handheld countersink and that hole is ready to receive the pivot. The pivot itself is essentially a stud, designed to both locate the count wheel and have sufficient length to be able to accommodate the small friction spring. I turn the shouldered section to be a close fit with the count wheel and then formed a short thread making sure that it would be no longer than the thickness of the great wheel. This is to ensure that the end of the thread remains clear of the barrel when it's assembled.
the screw was quench hardened and polished and then heat glued on a bed of brass chips. Ok, so with the main components mostly formed, I can move on to making the hex shape on the barrel arbor. The feature needs to be positioned just outside the barrel cap, and have a small cylindrical section turned just beyond that. I took care of the flats on the mill, using the hex shaped collet block for fast and accurate indexing. With the flats formed, I located the work between centres on the lathe, to turn down the small cylindrical section. That hexagon now becomes the shape to aim for when making the hole in the driving wheel. Again, marking out the work on the wheel crossing jig, this time using a couple of custom turned spacing pins to give the required dimensions. I used some very careful filing to open up that hex hole. And then I gave the wheel a light rub on some abrasive paper to knock down the small filing boot. Importantly, the wheel now fits comfortably in all positions around the arbor hex. It's a snug fit, but not so tight that it can't be gently lifted off the arbor when setting the stop work. The design calls for a clock pin to sit in front of the wheel and hold it in place. So it's back to the mill to drop in a small cross hole. And that completes the driving wheel and barrel arbor modification. The last item on the parts list is the friction spring. And I've found that it's a lot safer and easier to make holes in thin stock using a punch. So I've added another size to the punch that I used in the previous episode for the main spring, to match the required hole in this little spring. A few strokes on an India stone gets the perimeter in a shape and then a quick bend and it's done.
And although not specified in the plans, I decided to make a thin washer to lift the count wheel clear of the great wheel, and so avoid it marking the surface of the wheel over time. OK, so all the bits are good to go. Let's put it together and have a better look at how it all works. Once installed, the count wheel sits just clear of the great wheel surface. And although free to rotate, the friction spring generates just enough force to keep the wheel from moving when it's out of mesh with the driving wheel. A secondary feature of this stopwork design is that the initial position of the driving wheel can be carefully set to exclude both the first and last few turns of the mainspring, where torque variability is at its worst. It effectively limits the operation to the best section of the mainspring, significantly improving the performance of the clock. As the clock runs down, the count wheel engages with the driving wheel tooth and reverses its rotation until it's once again back in the original position, ready to be rewound. Which brings me to the subject of the next and final episode of this build series, a custom winding key. Thanks for watching, I'll see you later. And if you've just made your way into this clock making series, thanks for checking it out. This is just one episode of a longer series where I show all of the steps to make a mechanical clock from raw metal stock, so be sure to check out those other videos. If you'd like to help me bring you more project videos like this one, then consider becoming a Clickspring patron. As a patron of the channel, you get access to exclusive patron-only video content, free plans for the patron projects, and the chance to win the actual project at the end of each build. Find out more by visiting patreon.com forward slash clickspring. And finally, if you're looking for some new projects for your lathe or mill, then take a moment to visit clickspringprojects.com where you'll find a range of plans available for download, including plans for some of the tools I've made to help me construct this clock. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next video.